All right, we are back. Time now for the MMA After Hour, and that means it is time for everyone's favorite segment. It is time. Now it's time to open up your ears picks. and your minds, MMA fans. It's time for Rick's Picks. Rick's Picks. Rick's Picks are lots of fun, and his hair is in a bun. Get some water. You already know what it is. Rick's My lips. Picks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the new craze taking the world by storm. Live from the Vox Studios in beautiful New York City, it's time for... Rick's Picks! Boom! Mr. New York Rick? Hello. Rocking that north face? It's a little chilly. Bang! Is it cold in there? Yeah. Not cold, no, but I'm, I'm much more comfortable with it on. Okay. Do your thing, bro. Do um, your thing. What's up? Oh, not much. You know, just interviewed 12 people in a row for the last four hours and 41 minutes. Um, but what a great day it has been. I mean, really, from GSP to T-City to Chris Cyborg to Gegard Musasi. That's just how we do it around here. Almost rhymed. That whole thing just almost rhymed. Um, no, there's a, there's a lot still to unpack. There's a lot going on. Let us not waste any time. Let's get to, let's get to some damn picks here. I hope you got some good ones because I still have a lot to get off my chest. Well, between the combination of Rick's picks and the uh, questions, I think we'll get to most of it. All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, we start in the world of sponsorships. Oh, yes. This one here. Yes. From Burger King. Yes. Can we hear it? Try this new spicy crispy chicken sandwich from this king. There's no doubt I'm going to destroy this thing. <laughs> so spicy and crispy and juicy. It just doesn't stand a chance. Mm. Committing to the bite for sure. Mm. From one king to another, this pack's a real kick. Spicy. Introducing the new spicy crispy chicken sandwich. Only at Burger King. Oh, and by the way, thanks for all the trash talk guys. You just put Connor Jr. through college. GDP, baby. Yeah. GDP. Get that paper. What do you think? Scale of one to ten. What do you give it? Seven? Seven? Ten for getting the deal done. Yeah. Seven for the actual execution. Um, not exactly the most innovative commercial, but listen, doing the job. Man, I got to say, this is one of those times where, it, it, again, it, well, one of the many times where it kind of bumps me out where, you know, there, 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 there are no sponsors in the UFC because it's just cool to have like a Burger King logo on your shirt. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? It's just a Connor, cool thing. Connor's in bed with the king now. That's that's uh, that's a big deal. The, uh, I the thought way, it was great. The way they captioned it, Connor McGregor, the king, a private jet, and the all-new spicy crispy chicken sandwich. Have you had it? I have not. Is that a really a new thing? I feel like I've heard of the spicy chicken sandwich. I mean... Are you a big Burger King guy? You, no, I'm not. But you would think that spicy spicy chicken sandwich is like a common thing amongst all fast food chains. So um, whatever's new about this one, um, it packs a kick, I guess. Would it have been a bigger deal if he signed with McDonald's? I feel like that's like the hate that he's getting. Like, oh, he didn't sign with McDonald's. No, not. that's lame. That's lame. Uh, what? Uh, don't, don't get me wrong. Signing with McDonald's is a big deal, but it's lame that this can't be viewed as an accomplishment. Uh, is that something that people McDonald's. are saying? I was just kidding. Oh. You were joking. Well, then, no, I've, I haven't seen that. So I just feel like that's something that people would bring up. Like, oh, that's great. Call me when you, you know, you sign with I Ronald. haven't seen that, but if, if it is true, I mean, that's silliness. Yeah. Um, this is a prestige brand. He, he's, doing, he's doing big things with the king. Big things. Okay, speaking of doing big things in the sponsorship world. Oh, yeah. How about that? There it is. Guy right there. Boom. Uh, all over their social channels, but this from Instagram, Polo Ralph Lauren saying, they're excited to announce Luke Rockhold as the face of their iconic fragrance, Polo Blue. We showed some commercials uh, for it earlier, and he says more to come. So More to come. Exciting times. Okay. Uh, more importantly, at least for us, and this is huge, congratulations. It's great to see fighters, you know, GDPing outside of the world of MMA. Nice commercial as well. Look at that. Yeah. Right? Little hug, little girl, little balcony. Easy. L little girl, let's rephrase that. You know what I'm saying. Little this, little that. That's what I'm saying. Sheesh. Anyway, what do you think of his Bisping? <sighs> Bisping idea. 205 pounds. July. You don't, you don't like it, huh? Is that really what I want to see? I For Bisping. 
for either guy. Like for either guy. I'm kind of over that fight. Damn. One one. There's history there. It's what got us into this middleweight mess to begin with. I never got to see the second fight because I was in the process of getting yes. kicked out of the forum. So for me, it's you know, it's a very emotional fight. Do I want to see two career middleweights at 205 doing it for the third time? Mm, not not that interested, to be honest. Hmm. All right. I don't I don't hate it for Luke. I don't hate the idea of him fighting Bisping a third time. I don't hate the idea of him fighting at 205. Clearly, he has trouble cutting down to 185. Yeah. I just don't know if Bisping at this stage. Look, I, I'm all about the retirement fight. I'm all about like, I thought, you know, Mike Pyle, Zach Otto, okay, cool, on the same level. Like, we're not putting him in there against, you know, a young stud at 170, right? In the sense, I'm not taking anything away from 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 Otto, but you get what I'm saying, like a title contender, or a former sure. champion. Give the guy an opportunity to go out on top. This isn't that scenario necessarily, right? I mean, Luke Rockhold is a very, very tough fight. As far as like the history, the story, I mean, this gets the blood boiling. This is exciting. This to me has more um, depth to it than Derek Brunson or one of these other fights that are being thrown out there, right? Like even the Rashad fight, there, there's not much there, even though I know they fought, but like we, and they're buddies. We see them on the set all, all the time. So there's that, but I just don't know from from a health standpoint, from a competitive standpoint, if it makes a lot of sense for business. Well, if that's the case, then don't put him in there at all. No. If he can't compete against somebody who he's faced and not only faced, but knocked out not that long ago, then I don't think there there is a an answer for that. Like I think mm. if if this if he, if he if this is a fight that's not okay for him, then there's not a fight that's okay. For him. What? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. No, what are that's you talking about there. There are lower level middleweights who are not. He just Luke. knocked him out. He just did it. This is not. This is what not ancient history. It's he, it's gonna be. If they fight, it will be two years. What do you mean just? This is not. This is not a lifetime in, ago. Yes, it is a lifetime ago. He's been knocked out twice since then. Yeah, it's uh. It's I, I don't hate the fight on that basis. I just I'm not interested in seeing them run it back. I, I I'm over the saga. All right. And especially because it's two career middleweights being at two oh five now. It, it 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 doesn't make much sense to me. I I that's actually my favorite part of the whole thing, the two oh five part. Down with weight cutting. They're both on the same level. Roseanne Barr. Yes. Uh weighed in. Okay. Wow. Um, what a transition. <laughs> On uh, on Saturday to to remind everybody of this basic fact that just a basic rule of thumb for all you new combat sports fans disregard any scorecard from Judge Adelaide Bird. She still thinks fighting is scored similarly to golf, where the lowest score wins. And she tagged you and Brett Akamoto of ESPN. I'm still not sold that this is the real Roseanne Barr. I'm sorry, but I'm just not. It's it is. I mean, look, we'll have Roseanne on, and she'll clear this all up. I'm just not sold. I believe it. I buy it. But I'm glad Did that you she's... see the trailer for the new Roseanne show that aired. I did premiered, premiered uh, last night during the Oscars. I did not see. I didn't watch the Oscars, so I didn't see that. I heard someone as you guys were getting prepared saying, I can't wait to hear Ariel break down the Oscars. Was that you? No. You said that. I swear to God. They were joking. Because I'll break it down. Credit. No, I didn't see Why? It. Did you watch it? Uh, I actually turned it on for literally five minutes. And guess what happened when I turned it on? The Roseanne? No, Kobe Bryant wins in an award. Ah, uh, okay. We'll talk about that later, actually. Crazy. Turned it on. Um, Kobe Bryant wins. I'm like, all right, I'm good. <laughs> That's all good. You tuned it right at the right moment. I mean, okay. first he scores the big body armor deal with the UFC, and then he wins an Oscar. What a life. We also had another celebrity weighing in. Oh. This time, Rosie O'Donnell. Noted uh, MMA fan, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, posting here a picture of uh, Brian Ortega, captured from MMA fighting, actually. Saying thirteen and zero, yes, this man is it. Uh, tagging Joe Rogan, and then watching sat, sat night live UFC watching on Saturday night. Mm. Um, the luminaries were were on Twitter. I got to tell you, my mom sent me maybe like let me see how many texts now. Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't believe you have Brian Ortega on <laughs> with eight exclamation points. What a treat! She loves him with a with a. Uh, with a uh, screen grab, and then she sent me like this heart emoji thing, this thingy. Yeah, see this during the interview. Um, and then there's more. Uh, how cute is this guy with his brother? Amazing guy. Omg, hi, smiley face. I think when he said hi to her, <laughs> she's 
She turned into a 16 year old. Uh... Mom's got a crush on old Brian Ortega. <laughs> I mean, have you? Seen I don't blame that? her. Have you seen those, those eyes? eyes? Can I just bring up one thing? I mean, there's there's so much to like about Brian Ortega with the foundation, the winning, and the. But isn't there one fascinating part of this story? Tell us what it is. Not that long ago, Brian Ortega failed a post fight drug test. That's correct. Yet he doesn't get labeled with the same kind of vitriol and the same kind of negativity that a sure. say Chris Cyborg does. Why do you think that is? A few, a few things. Okay, please. One, he owned up to it immediately. Okay. Uh, accept the responsibility for it. And two, um, people are operating under the assumption that it was used as a weight-cutting uh, mechanism and not um, performance enhancement beyond that. Um, but I think more than anything, the, the former is what people latch onto it and is that he admitted making a mistake immediately and then moved on from it. Mm. Um I don't. I, I don't remember the 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 initial statement. Did he have a statement or something that he came out with? Yeah, I don't recall off the top of my head. Uh, I'm sure it, it, somebody can point us to it. Um, but all, in everything he said from that moment and since, he's always taken full responsibility for it and and not tried to blame it on anything else or not tried to um, to brush it away. He's always openly addressed it and admitted. Uh, he a he had a wrongdoing and, and oh now I remember I remember and yep. actively did this yep. and didn't try to create circumstances for him doing it. Um, so I think that that goes a long way in people's minds. Fessing up and admitting it was a mistake, vowing to not make that mistake again and moving on. Um, he doesn't shy away from it. And um, again, I also think what you test positive for also matters as well. In preparation for my UFC debut, I used a banned substance called. Dostanalone. It was irrespons it was an irresponsible decision that I will regret for the rest of my life. I apologize to my family, friends, fans, uh, the UFC, and everyone else who was affected by my selfish actions. It should be known that my coaches were totally unaware of my decision, and I am ashamed that I let down the people who believed in me more than I believed in myself. That might be the greatest. Yeah. I mean, holy smokes. This was from, uh, by right the way, away. August of 2014. He also said, going forward, I'd rather lose a fair fight to any opponent than defeat myself the way I have done. Yeah, done it right. Damn. I forgot so I forgot it's, it's the no way in surprise. which he handled that. It's no surprise that he was able to move on very quickly from it. Yeah. And people were willing to forgive when you handle it that way. Wow. And since, that's, that's, that's the first statement, but since, he's every time it's been addressed, he's had the same... I, I, don't, and I don't know if anyone's owned up to it that cleanly, like to yeah. any infraction. It was well done. When you don't have to, when you don't have to maneuver the facts and finesse things, and can say, "Look, I messed up," it makes things easier. And and he did it the right way. Amen. Speaking of people who have done it the right way, Frank Yeager throughout his career has done it the right way. Conor McGregor paying tribute to Edgar. Now, what did you think of this? Saying. Frankie's career deserved for that to be against me tonight. Respect Frankie. Love and respect always a true fighter's fighter. The first part is Conor McGregor seeking the attention. The second part is genuine uh, professing of, of admiration and, and respect and love for Frankie Edgar, which hard to be mad at that. I mean, it is your account. You probably want to get some shine on it. Um, and I think a lot of people feel this way, at least the second part about Conor McGregor. Um, did it deserve to be Conor McGregor? I mean, come on. Let's be real about the chances Wait. of that happening. Could you could you put that up for a second again? Frankie's career deserved for that to be against me tonight. Okay, let's just forget that line for a quick second. <laughs> sure. Respect Frankie, love and respect always, true fighters fighter, and even the heart emoji I thought was yeah. was endearing. But the first line is the part that I like read a few times and I was like, all right, fair. However, fair. Uh, however, Maybe there's some remorse, but however, after the Aldo Chad Mendez fight weekend, you remember Frankie beat Chad Mendez on a Friday. Yeah, Connor beat Aldo. That fight was there. That fight could have happened easily. So is he saying I messed up? I should have given him this chance because if he's saying anything but that, then the only reason that fight never happened is because of him. He's talking about that he, or is he the saying UFC that he wanted to jump in? Man. I don't know. That that fight should have happened after 194. Um, yeah, that's why it's not. You said fair. It's not fair. It's, oh, no, no, I, it's I, I'm just, ludicrous. Yeah, no, no. What I'm saying is like, okay, I, I, I understand it. I get the sentiment. But the only reason the fight didn't it's happen is because of Conor McGregor. Sure. So it's that, absolutely that, insane. That coming out after, I was like, 
I, I just wish they did, he didn't include that line because that kind of ruined the whole thing. No, but that's who Conor McGregor is, and, and I respect him. I respect him for it. Uh, um, it's always the Conor McGregor show, and good for him. Yeah. Um, also, uh, we had a statement from uh, Frankie Edgar after the fight yes. saying Saturday did not go as planned. Congrats to Ortega. He definitely got me with some good ones. I think that's an understatement. Thanks to all my peers, my team, my friends, and my fans for their nice words. They don't go unnoticed. All I can do now is dust myself off and get ready to put it all on the line again. As as we would expect, classy the best. Uh, from Frankie Edgar. One of the truly most underrated fighters of all time, in my opinion. Absolutely. One of the greatest of all time. Of course, former champion, all that. We don't have to go over his accolades, but just a guy who receives unanimous praise. When do you ever see this? Like, who talks crap about Frankie Edgar? I can't think of anyone. You'd be hard-pressed. Um, I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning this, and I won't go too into it, but I happen to sit right next to Mark Henry on the flight home. Mm-hmm. To say that he was devastated would be no, yeah, an understatement. Uh, this was like a 5.45 a.m. flight, so we were both kind of tired. But um, he was so devastated. I mean, like, the hurt that he wore on his face. He was so sad for Frankie. You know, they, those guys, I've talked about it with him on this show. Like, the way the Ali's and the, the Mark Henry's, and Eddie and Edson and Marlon talk about Frankie as being the leader they all live and die with this guy. So he was in, in so much pain. He was so hurt. Um, and that just tells you a little bit about, you know, just how special when his teammates and his coaches just, like, love him like a son. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I'd love to see him at 135. How about you? I would also like to see him at 135. Especially, like, Max is big, man. Max it's, is big. It's, Ortega's huge, right? Yeah, Orte Orte that, that was the discrepancy there. Standing next to Ortega, that was not... Um, two guys similarly sized matched up. Now, Frankie's made a career of beating people bigger than him, um, stronger than him. Um, so I don't want to turn this into a into a pity party for Frankie Edgar by saying, "Oh, he was so uh, out muscled, and you know now at 35, he'll have an opportunity." He this has been the Frankie Edgar story. He's always been able to compete against people who are bigger and stronger than him. Um, but I think at 35, he'd be more similarly matched uh, on that basis and and probably do pretty well. But I don't think, I mean, the guy's elite at 45 too. Let's not forget, like, you know, just because he lost to uh, Brian Ortega, who's who's on one right now, um, and Jose Aldo, Frank Yeager is still among the elite of the elite. And I wouldn't be surprised if he hopped up to 55 if he was still able to hang. The guy is just all toughness. And, and could hang anywhere. But if it's up to me, I'd like to see him take a crack at 35 just oh, because yeah. I think there's new challenges there, um, whereas 45 and 55 have kind of exhausted themselves uh, as far as Frankie Edgar's, uh, you know, new matchups, fresh matchups. Sure. Um, but I think he'd be successful in any of those divisions. This, this, In my opinion, this is not a case of Frankie Edgar's shot, Frankie Edgar's done. This no. It's a case of meeting a very game Brian younger. Ortega, uh, younger, hungrier uh, Ortega, but I think Frankie Edgar still has some fights in him. I, I don't know if I, I, I if it's fair to say hungrier, just a hungry, a younger, hungry opponent. Fair enough. All right, don't be taking shots at Frankie. I'll go yeah, over there and smack you in the head. It, I, after everything I said about Frankie <laughs> Edgar, clearly <laughs> hate the guy. Uh, um, Max Holloway, mm. the featherweight champion, also having something to say about Frankie. What Edgar, a statement, huh? Uh, saying you had nothing to gain from taking that fa fight, Frankie Edgar, which is actually true. I mean, Frankie. Other than money, kudos to him. Well, but kudos to Frankie for taking a fight against a Brian Ortega, sure. who I can imagine that not a lot of people wanted to face. But you took it and defended what you already earned. There's no belt for sacrificing everything, but true fans and Jersey. This is New Jersey. Knows no belt can outshine what you bring to the sport. Chin up, brother. Yeah, that was cool. Nice message. Right from after Max Holloway. You know, I keep trying to talk to Max Holloway, but uh, they say he doesn't want to talk. Well, Nathan Thorpe on Twitter okay. wanted to talk to Max Holloway, saying, remember when Conor McGregor destroyed you in Boston? Oh, yeah. That's still his belt, and he said bet. Oh, yeah. Still his belt, Max. Yeah. To which this is Max great. Holloway spoke and said, the undercard on fight night, we were kids. We got injured and made 12K. I do remember, but it doesn't define who I am today. If you were hurt as a child and it defines who you are today, don't let it. I believe you can be better today. And who you were yesterday, bro. Hashtag Sarah. Um, Max Holloway just out here dishing. He's amazing on Twitter. He's really he's very good on, on social media. Yeah. And he's also very inspirational. Yeah. I mean, you could really get into your feelings there when somebody's bringing up Conor McGregor uh, dusting you. And uh, he took it another direction, being positive. Uh, shout out to the to the positive featherweights out there. We've got we've got some good ones in this uh, 
by the way. Let me tell you something. The UFC has a crop of youngsters, and it's not just about UFC 222. There were a few on display, but if they could just get to a nice little sweet spot as far as the number of events per year is concerned where they can let these personalities breathe and build them the right way, uh, I, for one, am, am, am not as down on the UFC's future. They just got to do it the right way. You know, these UFT 223 promos, a yes. nice little song. You know, you, you got to do things special. You got to make events feel big. So on display with Max Ortega and some of the others we've talked about today. Yes. Yeah, speaking of the young featherweights, um, here we see Chris Cyborg uh, grappling with another young featherweight. Oh, yes. I see what at you did here. the UFC 222 open workout. The masked man revealed to be the one and only BJ Penn.com. Uh, B- I said the one and only BJ Penn.com. Mm-hmm. The one and only BJ Penn, the GOAT, uh, getting into it at the open workout. I thought this was pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool. Um, running in. We'll see it here. It's going to replay uh, this video from our website, MMAfighting.com. Uh, Cyborg is going through the open workout, and BJ comes from the, the stands here as she's boxing with uh, Perillo. Yeah, and of course the the common connection is Perillo, longtime coach of BJ Penn and uh, Chris Cyborg as well. I have to say it, it hurt me a little bit to see BJ lose I mean, again. Look at this, taps him out. Um, a lot of people that you saw you saw his appearance on on the broadcast on Saturday, right? I did. Yes. First of all, it's just great to see him at the events, and uh, I wish we would see him more in like that sort of ambassador role. I don't I yeah. don't do that very often, but it would be nice. Um, he he did the. Whatever that Shaka. thing, is. yeah. But it also looked like he was do, doing "Call Me." I don't think he was doing "Call Me." I, I was joking when I when I tweeted that, but it did kind of look like he was saying "Call Me," right? He put his hand up a little bit. It was more of a like flex and shaka, like a double. I'm not gonna read into it because my feelings would be too hurt if all of a sudden the phone starts ringing for fights and uh, it was a shaka. Okay, Let's just leave it there. Fair enough. Um, by the way, speaking of Hawaiian uh, greats. Yeah. Our, our friend Rob DeMello, who works out at uh, KHON2 yes. in Hawaii, just sent me this. Just sent me this. Uh, the, the, the headline is, Negotiations stall between UFC and HTA regarding Holloway Ooh. title defense. With the stars aligned for a mega fight this summer, it appears the negotiations have stalled between the UFC and Hawaii to host Max Holloway's inevitable title defense against the undefeated Brian Ortega. According to sources close to the situation, a proposal sent by the UFC to the Hawaii Tourism Authority in January to host UFC 227 at Aloha Stadium in August was countered by the agency recently. However, the two sides are set to be on opposite sides of the octagon regarding the price tag. Like the National Football League, who was paid $5 million by the state to hold the Pro Bowl, the UFC traveling to Hawaii would require incentives. Sources tell KHON2 that the HTA's counter left the two sides millions of dollars apart and have stalled. The HTA does not need to be involved for the UFC to bring an event to Hawaii. However, sources close to the situation feel that the partnership will likely be dependent on the organization coming to the islands with high costs that the production would require for a large-scale event. Ah. Boo. Damn. Whack. Maybe this is posturing, and hopefully it is, getting the, getting the laundry out in the public uh, so that the sides can come closer. This needs to happen. Yeah. You need to do... Brian Ortega versus Max Holloway, and you oh have to do it in God. Hawaii. How crazy would that be? Man. Watch them go to Hawaii for, like, UFC Fight Night, you know, 223, headlined by Jimmy Manoa versus Alir Latifi or something. Like, you know, like how they went to St. Louis without Tyron Woodley? Easy. <laughs> There's too many good Hawaiians for this not to happen. Yeah. Nate Diaz over the weekend. Yes. Um, receiving an award from uh, High Times Magazine. High Times, baby. Most influential person in cannabis, 2017. Now, it's interesting. It says 2017, so that doesn't take into account his appearance at the Fight Night Show in No, Austin. maybe he'll just win next year, too. I mean, I would think he's well, he I mean, it up. not so fast. You know, Sean O'Malley is making a, that's true, that's true. a strong run. I'm not ready for a Sean O'Malley-Nate Diaz feud, by the way. I don't feel like this is right. <laughs> I was very disappointed when I saw that tweet. You know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. I'm not ready um, for this. I don't think the world is ready for this. Yeah. I mean, hopefully they'll get baked and just forget about it. Yeah, that would be nice. Okay. Mirko uh, Krokop. Yes. Posting this yes. to Facebook from his phone, apparently. Mobile uploads. Very nice. Uh, Bellator logo. Yes. Which led to 
Miracle Crow Cop versus Roy Nelson, slated for Bellator 200. Story by PC Carroll. Yes. For MMAfighting.com. Your thoughts? Mm. Not feeling it? Yeah. Uh, look, if this can be a way for Crow Cop to somehow sneak into the tournament, now you've got me a little more interested. If it's just a Crow Cop versus Nelson fight, um, rematch, UFC 137. Was that a fight that you needed to see again? No, I actually kind of forgot about it. Yeah. If this is a way for, look, all of a sudden Fedor makes it to the final, somebody drops out on the other side of it, and we get Fedor versus Crow Cop, now you're cooking. Now, now there's, now there's, that would be fun. Let me ask you. Outside of that. Uh, can I tell you what my idea was? Yeah. Rampage versus Crow Cop. Love that. Fresh, different, striking, right? Yeah, you know, why, why, why is that not the fight? I think there are reasons. That, Actually, I mean, there's a report that came out of Brazil today that uh, they're looking at doing Rampage Vanderlei. I like this better. Okay, well. No, I, I like Rampage versus Crocop better. No, no, no. Really? Number four? <laughs> you want to see number four? You want to see Rocco Bisbic 3, but you don't want to see Vanderlei versus Rampage? I didn't that say is, By the way, that is an epic. I didn't, that is an epic saga. I didn't necessarily say I want to see it. I told you why I liked it for Bisping and why I didn't like it for. Excuse me, why I liked it for Rocco, why I didn't like it for Bisping. So I, I'm not really signing up. I mean, it kind of came out of nowhere here, so I sort of reacted to it. But, you know, I, I'm a fan of the guy going out on his own terms against someone more at his level. Uh, anyway, that's Rampage versus right Vanderlei. Give it to me a hundred times, okay, forever, right. until they're both in wheelchairs, smashing into each other with the Damn. with the chairs. I'll take it. I'll take it all day. Um, this fight, uh, it's good. Look, it's good to see Mirko back um, in the fold, but this fight in particular, not one I was dying to see. But we'll see what's ahead for him after that. Maybe there's a mini little four man tournament there. Maybe they can match up Vanderlei. Or Rampage versus the winner of Nelson and uh, Krokop. Mirko Krokop's winning this whole damn thing. Watch. I mean, he has to get into it. Just watch. He's the Daniel Cormier of the tournament. It could be. Look, Mirko versus Fedor in the final. I'm in. Uh, Bellator also announcing Paul Daly versus John Fitch, who we had on earlier today for Bellator uh, 199. Yes. What did you think of John Fitch's appearance on the show today? I thought he needs to figure some things out. He needs to brush up on. I had some people say that like he he, he ran circles around me. Uh, I mean, humbly, I, I would. I, look, I'm not going to get into an argument or a debate with a with a with a guest because I'm inviting him on the show and I don't feel like that's appropriate. That said, I dis. Why are you laughing? What's so funny? Well, Rob made a noise back here by accident. That said, I I I. Disagree. I don't think his facts are correct on a lot of things. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I, I just I was a little surprised. Also, just going to call it out. He was clearly reading a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. I think what I would I don't say need, about this. I don't is need I no think, script to, to debate this stuff. No. I think and by the way, is, I'm not on the UFC side. Yeah, I'm of course. Not, what are you talking about? I think Fitch's ambitions are good. His heart is in the right place. He's trying to do things the right way and trying to. Um, fight for fighters' rights. So no matter how that slices, whether it's this this group, this another group, um, his ambitions are noble, and he's trying to do the right thing. But I think, you know, brushing up on who's a promoter, who's who's a manager, things like that. Yeah. And then he sent me something about Lou DiBella weighing in, but it's like, dog. In the in this it, circumstance, you know. But even even the free market thing doesn't make sense. No, it is. I mean, there, when you're a free agent, that's a free market. There's a free that's market, but it's a limited free market. Great. No one. What I think what he was getting. And then at, how about the, the the Super Bowl analogy? Well, what? what he was getting at was you can win a championship in football, in American football, and then go to another team. Yeah, but in in MMA, if you win a championship with the organization, there's they will keep you in the contract. That's what he was. That's what he was getting at. Was well, you have a champion. That's what he clause. was getting at. You have he a did not, He did not verbalize it. At the end, clearly. he kind of got he got around to it, and that's what I what he was he was talking about was. You have a champions clause, so if you're dominant in your sport, you're remaining with that organization, uh, barring other circumstances. I mean, we've seen uh, cases where uh, people have been able to win their free agency as a champion, but that is uh, what he was talking about, in my opinion. How about this, though? Okay. 
Paul Daly versus John Fitch. What do we feel about this matchup? What do you feel At first, I was about like, oh, fight? damn, those are two you know, marquee names. They've been around the game for quite some time. But then I started to like scratch my head a little bit and say, is Paul Daly being punished for you know his comments recently about the Bellator brass? Don't love it stylistically for Paul Daly. Yeah. But, hey, I like, I like the he, idea of Fitch fighting in Bellator. A, I like the idea of Fitch fighting in San Jose. B. Of course. Um, I mean... Daly signed on the dotted line. He's well. Daly wanted it. He's called. In fact, I think as early as February. I know there, he there was, wanted. I know he was down. There was some time in February, mid February, where he was calling for this fight and um, wanted it. So maybe Paul Daly knows something we don't know. Um, two high level guys and uh, a big matchup for Bellator one ninety nine. Still can't get over two hundred. I, I still like it. It it uh, it enrages me that Bellator two hundred is going to air in 2018 via tape delay this 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 promotion is owned by a tv company what the heck 200 what come on what are you doing it's crazy yeah it just shouldn't happen offer new- offer it online for free uh, on on paramountnetwork.com give us somewhere I, I mean what 200 it's horrible it's not too late to do that yeah it's not too late to revise um, and figure out a way to deliver it to people. Uh, some news from the WMMA world. Victor uh, Mizuki replacing Janessa Morandin, facing Verna Jandiroba for the uh, vacant strawweight title at Invicta FC 28. I'm not sure who like runs the show over at Invicta, but they have uh, a- an amazing ability to release news at the worst times possible. How do you figure? This one came out at 5.30 Eastern time, um, right before the UFC weigh-ins, on a UFC pay-per-view weekend with a Bellator event coming up and all kinds of news. I don't know, maybe you can weigh in like in the mind of a PR person, but uh, uh, announcing news about an upcoming event at 5.30 on a Friday in the midst of all other kind of news regarding MMA seems like, uh, I don't know, not the most opportune time to release news. Not, definitely not ideal. Neither is the injury. You know, you got to move on. And, Would a Monday uh, afternoon... You know, release a one o'clock or two o'clock, maybe in the middle of a of an MMA show, something like that. With that, no, because be... then you'll say the main event. You know, then then you'll complain about it happening during the show. There's there's well, no it's not it's not to me, but I'm just saying. Yeah, five thirty. No, I, I know you're not Friday. talking about yourself. No, 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 no. Just a five thirty on a Friday. Look, like, I mean, all this stuff. I know you reviewed notes with Aunt Evans. Yeah. You know, no, 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 no. This is a hundred percent me. Um, I don't even know who Aunt Evans is. <laughs> Neither <So>. do I. <laughs> How dare you mention that name on this show? Uh, how about this name? Okay. Ennis Cantor. Oh, yes. This is great. Uh, teaching Chris Weidman. I'm sorry. No. And I, you know, be. Look at those punches. I'd, I'd like to see Ennis Cantor actually teach Chris Weidman, but Chris Weidman uh, teaching Ennis Cantor um, how to punch. Not terrible. Not terrible. I mean, we've seen some, some disasters. A little right action to, there. Yeah, I mean, just. Um, I, I thought it was interesting that uh, that you you picked Cantor's tweet and not Weidman's. Why? What's the Weidman's was a tweet to address to LeBron James. I didn't even. You didn't know. see it. Uh, Weidman tweeted LeBron James saying, um, "Hey, you know, best thing twice. I've been working with my guy. <laughs> that's Don't pretty, step that's, us. I, I didn't see that, yeah. but that's pretty funny. I saw this from Cantor, but that's that's actually pretty funny. Yeah, that was good stuff. If I, I had known, I would have picked that one. Man. Um, how come you didn't text it to me and start talking uh, all that ish? I mean, oh, then again, look. I mean, looking at this, you know, LeBron could just figure you. You follow me on Twitter. Pretty. You see when I tweet stuff. I guess, nah, you know, not all the time. The you know. Press releases. Man. Yeah, exactly. I got th- I got things going on. Look, I mean, I wouldn't be too happy about this either. Like LeBron would still dust this. Yeah. Chump. I don't know about um, that. See that right? Boom! Power. Ugh. Just gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we now switch over to esports. Oh, this Demetrius is great. Johnson. Uh, let's bring the audio up on this because Demetrius is, as himself, applying an arm bar in the, U- the new EA ah! UFC game. Oh, my God. That just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> and then his opponent quit. If you're not familiar with what's going on here, his opponent uh, disconnected, uh, clip it. which I'll is what, like, tonight. sore losers kind of do. Like, when you lose, you don't, That's you don't wait to go through the end screens. So he just... I love this. Demetrius doing hey. a little salt bay on him. Hey. <laughs> how does he do this? How does, what? How does he, like, 
do the thing with him sitting there and the screen. So he records himself on a green screen. Oh. And then takes the feed of the video game and puts that. It's incredible. On the back. This a is... lot of a lot of uh, technology at play here and, and well done by Demetrius, but somehow we can very rarely get him on Skype with all this. Yeah, what uh, the hell? Technology. Ah! <laughs> well done to Demetrius. Oh, um, that's good. We stick in the world of video games to see the Street Fighter Twitter account congratulating uh, Angela Hill on her win uh, last weekend. UFC Orlando saying congratulations to Angie Overkill on her latest win. Like Dalsim, she made every strike count. So here from an Invicta weigh-in where uh, Angela was wearing the Dalsim costume. Angela Hill throws a lot of shade my way on Twitter. I don't know, you know, she says I don't get her references or things like that. Do you get this one? Do you know what this is? Yeah, that's uh, Pebbles from the Flintstone. <laughs> <laughs> here comes, I mean... She's vicious on Twitter. She's gonna she's gonna slay you again. Listen, I mean, it's gonna be bring it. Do you not? Do you actually not know Street Fighter? You know Street Fighter, yes. You've heard of this. I play losers play Street Fighter. I'm, oh, I'm more of a Mortal Kombat guy myself. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Name somebody from Mortal Kombat. Uh, Emojin. What? There, who? there always used to be this guy who would be like Emojin. You know when he would. <laughs> I never played those games. I had a life. I was, you know, dating and doing things of that nature. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. For uh, sure. I was, I was a NBA Jam, Madden. Okay, fair enough. I bet you can name some players from NBA Jam, so I won't quiz you on that hell one. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, but this is cool. Street Fighter is cool. Yeah. Angela Hill's cool. Uh, it was a good that. costume. Good to see them shouting her out. Paying tribute. And now, finally, we end with, and I have to give a special shout-out okay. to PD One Shoe, okay. a.k.a. PT, a.k.a. Peter Carroll from MMA Fighting. PD One Shoe. I never heard that one before. I mean, you wouldn't have. That's that's a street nickname. Only only people who run on the rough on the rough streets oh. would know about this. Oh, this is amazing. But what we have here is the gym of one. Yes. Uh, um, He's done this in the past. The, the gym of one Gunnar Nelson. Yes. He did the Just a Bieber. Remember that one? Doing. What is this one? This is Beat It. This is Beat It. Oh, my God. Look at the production value. Incredible. Oh my gosh. Is Holly in it too? Can we turn the uh the volume up? Yes. Now will we get will we get you know fly for this? What do you mean? Because of the music. You're always afraid about no, the music. No, no, no. Not this one? How come? Their video, I mean, look, their video may. Um, this is phenomenal. Is Gunny in it? Is Gunny in it? Gunny's the star. There's Holly! That's Gunny's dad. Yeah. Oh, there's Gunny right there. Is Gunny in it? This is amazing. You remember? Look at that. Who's that? This is incredible. <laughs> I love these guys. Look at the. All right, maybe. All right, let, let's uh, let's bring the audio down. Go find the whole song, um, on the account of their gym, Mjolnir MMA. Um, you, doing. Oh, look at this. The whole. You remember? Do you remember the the Justin Bieber one? The I'm sorry. Is it? What's the name of the song? I think that is it. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Remember that one? That one's amazing. And they're wearing like random. This is NBA not amazing. Jerseys. Look at these moves. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I just I can't believe that this is actual like an annual thing that they do. I thought that that was a one off. Shout out to uh, Peter Carroll. Yeah. For putting me onto this one. By the way, how about this tweet from Max Holloway that you missed? Maybe what? better than the other one. What was it? Um. So Connor responded. To the Frank, the, the the Max to Frankie tweet. Yeah, I didn't like. No, it. no, no. Go ahead, tell me. He said, "Kid, you bounced. Yeah, leave yeah. it." But then Max responded to that. You saw I mean, it? I saw the response. It was okay. Oh, we talking about bouncing now? Don't like my tweet? Your coach did. Go ask him why. Maybe you'll find what you lost. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, his coach liked his tweet. Uh. I'm still looking at some sweet moves from Gunnar Nelson right now. Um, oh. All right. That's it for uh, that's it for Rick's picks this week. Okay. Now we're gonna do some questions from yeah, let's do some questions. The fans out there. Okay. But first, we're gonna start how we always start with the question of the day by Ariel Hawani. Yes, can't wait. Saying yes, it's early, but who? Yes. Are you favoring right now? Yes. The options we had in front of us are Max Holloway and Brian Ortega. 
What do you got? With 14,000, let's call it 15,000 votes. Max Holloway, 62%. Hmm. Brian Ortega, 38%. Oh. Are you surprised by this outcome? Uh, I thought maybe it would be a little closer only because of the recency of the Ortega fight, but overall, no. What do you think? I'm not surprised by that, no. I think Holloway um, made uh, announced himself last year in a way that uh, n- I don't think many people would be picked against him outside of maybe Conor McGregor. Um, so that does not surprise me, although um, I think we're at a situation where Brian Ortega might not have even been uh, in the conversation until very recently. Um, people would have been dismissive of his chances, and now at least 38% of people would favor him. Um, but that's a fight that is going to be exciting. Yeah, I can't wait. Speaking of which, by the way, uh, Ortega was apparently on the UFC Filtered podcast, and uh, Dana <laughs> called him and said that <laughs> and said that uh, he is, in fact, getting the title shot. So in case you were wondering and worried. He finally spoke to him. Although, do you, do you not agree with me that like a nice little handshake in the back would be apropos? I mean, of course, but I... You know, circumstances are what they are. He, what circumstances? Maybe he, he couldn't. Maybe he couldn't get to him. Look, Come on. it's a busy night. It's be, it's been done for decades. This sort of thing. I don't think Ortega's too upset. He got the phone call. He's getting right. the title see, it shot. It actually seemed like it bugged him a little bit. You're 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 not wrong that uh, it would mean something, and and I think he expressed as much. But he's he's got a, a title fight in front of him now. We're gonna see him versus Max Holloway. Hopefully at UFC 227 in Hawaii. That'd yeah, be amazing. I think my mom will be there cage side. <laughs> <laughs> wherever he fights next there's uh mama hawani okay speaking of fighting next who should be next for cyborg is it megan anderson is it amanda nunez is it somebody else is it holly holm who who should be the next opponent for chris cyborg i mean look uh at this juncture even if megan anderson is cleared you know her her visa problems or whatever whatever that cyborg tweeted about whatever the issues are i don't know what the issues are but she's not talking about it for some reason um, it's clearly not an injury, right? Because we see her training, right? Yeah. Whatever the, her issues are, if she's cleared in the next couple months, do you really want to debut against Chris Cyborg at this point? You haven't fought since January. But how of last what is, year? What is your path back there? One fight, get in, get in, versus, fight. Versus who? I don't know. That's that's the UFC's problem. So yeah, did I want to see that fight? Of course, she was the Invicta champ. She was on a bit of a roll. But now, after watching. Kunitskaya and 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 seeing what it's like to debut in the main event title fight against Cyborg. If I'm her coach and her management, I don't know if I want that. Now, fighting Cyborg brings a lot of cash. So yep. maybe you want to do it because you haven't fought. More power to you. I like the Nunes fight. I don't love the idea of taking a fight away from Raquel Pennington. Um, yeah. She's been promised that fight. Uh, I love the idea of that fight happening in Rio, but I understand it's too soon. It's not, it's just not a great situation. And I have a hard time believing that Nunes is going to fight May 12th if she wins that fight, is going to turn around and fight on July 7th. I just have a hard time seeing that. So my guess as to what would happen is, based on the cards that we're playing with here, Nunes fights, and this is a total guess, Nunes fights Pennington, and then she fights Cyborg down the line August, September, uh, you know, October, whatever the case is. I just don't feel like um, she's going to return in, in less than two months. Maybe Megan Anderson, you know, Maybe maybe something happens and she's able to fight in July and, and Cyborg gets her wish, but everyone wants to fight on that card. You know, you can't have like eight title fights on that card. So she said she has two fights left on her contract. It sounds like Anderson and Nunes could be the last two, but you know, who expected Yana Kunitskaya to get a title shot? I think if you've got one in the hand, take the shot against Cyborg. If if I'm speaking of the perspective of Megan Anderson. I don't think you want to take another fight before you fight Cyborg. Yeah, um, that is the money fight. The, the path back there is against similarly tough opponents. Um, I, w- I would take that fight now if if granted the opportunity. Do you think Father Time finally touched Frankie Edgar, or is it Brian Ortega's time in the sport, or a combination of both? I mean, I fall firmly yeah. in the both camp. Yeah, uh, both really. Father Time. I- Listen, one thing about Frankie that is worth noting, no one has been in the cage longer than him. Yes. And he has been hit. He's not been only in training, up, yes. but we've seen him getting hit, right? So at some point, it's going to catch up. Uh, the other thing about Chris, 
Chris is like she never gets hit, right? So who knows what this is going to do to her longevity? The fact that she's fighting opponents who don't touch her. But as far as Frankie goes, he has been hit. So at some point, that's going to, and that's why I said I would love to see him at 135. So maybe it's both. I I just think that you know sometimes these these stars align. You run into this young gun, this locomotive, and everything's working out. And I do believe there's a lot of credence to what Henner and uh, and Brian were saying at the top of the show. Maybe having less time to prepare at times when you're a youngster and you're just kind of in shape uh, is is better for you mentally um, yeah. and physically too because you just I get think, three weeks to go you know full balls to the wall. I think there's no doubt though that look Frank as you said Frankie's been in there for a very long amount of time over the course of his title fights and not all of them were one sided. Um, a lot of them he took he took a significant amount of damage that is going to catch up to somebody at a certain point. That said. Don't get me wrong. The shots that Ortega landed would have put anybody out. He, he lifted yeah. him off his feet. Brutal. Damn uppercut. Brutal. Um, so no no slight to Frankie. Okay. Should a ref consider a fighter's past resiliency in their decision to stop a fight, especially a TKO? Uh, in this case, they're talking about Brian Ortega definitely winning the fight, but would have liked to see, Andrew says he would have liked to see Frankie Edgar attempt to roll to his knees and shoot. So he's saying Frankie wasn't completely out. Do you do you, do you want to see referees what? give leeway to somebody? What are you talking about Frankie wasn't completely out? This guy like, has an issue with the stoppage? Saying Frankie is known for being resilient and known no. for being able to, to recover. That's... What do you want him to die in there? He was out. Mm, he wasn't. What? Like, being knocked unconscious is different than a TKO. He wasn't. Are you? He wasn't asleep. What? You want him to just what? You're you're advocating that all finishes have to be like unconscious KOs? No, you're advocate. You're the guy was out saying that it was, but it was not. He was out on his feet. I would argue, but even before the uppercut, go back and watch it. Okay, but that was a very clean finish. There's no controversy whatsoever. Stop no, trying to make controversy. There's, there's not a controversy. What, what the question is is one of the all-time worst questions in the history of this program. You see, okay, we'll mean, move on. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew, we can't have this conversation. No, we can't. What is it? I don't even understand what he's advocating for. Well, that's because you're, you're coming from a perspective of not knowing the difference between a KO and a TKO. I'm fully aware of the difference. The difference between a KO and a TKO, TKO is when the referee steps in and stops the action, like what happened in the Cyborg Kunitskaya fight. There's a very clear TKO. Uh, a KO is, I don't know, when uh, Mark Hunt knocked out Chris Tuscher. Right. Yeah. So what, what do we mean? I don't know the difference. And in this case, what happened? Yeah, the referee stepped in, but sometimes right. it's not it even needed. Sometimes when Mark Hunt knocks out Roy Nelson, it's not even needed. But the guy steps in anyway. You get it? So it's more like that one than the cyborg one. Sure. What about Stefan Skyscraper? Street? Yeah. Do you think he's going to be uh, relegated to the role of a gatekeeper or move to Bellator? What What is next for Stefan? It's it's been you know, up it's and tough. down, it's been tough. some time off. It's amazing. He has the win over Stipe. Um, you know, Rogan was critical of him on the broadcast and. Sure. To a certain degree, rightfully so. He still hasn't figured out how to use his length to the, his advantage. He is so tall. He is so long. He's over seven foot, yet it still seems like he doesn't use the jab properly, that he doesn't use that, you know, um, that advantage that he has. And it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to watch. Uh, you know, he's been through so much with his own health. Yep. If you're asking, do I think the UFC should cut him? No. Um, I think Arlovsky was a good fight for him. Yeah. He was injured. I think that was a perfect matchup. Yeah, he was injured in the Volkov fight. He had a shoulder injury, so it's a tough spot, but uh, no, I, I don't think that they should cut him. That's for sure. What's incredible about this fight is also Andre Arlovsky. How many times has his back been against the wall and he always finds a way? Like, losing streak, winning streak. Um, again, putting together now two in a row. Um, Arlovsky keeping himself in the in the conversation. Man, it's amazing. Like I said, Mike Brown may have added years to his career, or at least fights. Uh, one that you've been wanting to talk on for for a bit, so here's the opportunity. It seems that CSAC were more concerned with getting money than actually punishing John Jones for cheating. When a fighter does get fined a huge sum, where does that money go? So let's use that as as an entryway into talking about this John Jones situation. Um, but maybe answer the, the question first. 
uh, it, go, find, it goes to the money commission goes directly to the commission. Yes, but it's very sort of vague as to where exactly, you know, or what exactly they do with it. But it does go to the commission. Here's my here's my two cents. I'll, 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 I'll be very quick as far as the John Jones situation. We could do a whole hour on this, but we've run out of time. My, 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 my two cents on the John Jones situation is this. When the hearing started, Andy Foster of the California State Athletic Commission came out and said that his recommendation was that John Jones should receive a 40% fine of his purse against Daniel Cormier and receive a revocation of his license, right? That should be his punishment. Then we had the testimony from a couple of witnesses, but most importantly, we heard from John Jones finally after all this time. His testimony went horrible. It did not go well. It was incriminating. It, nothing, there were no positives out of that. I mean, just one thing after the next, it got worse and worse and worse and worse. California, um, they were prepared. It just wasn't good. Okay. Then they take a break and we wonder, like, what, what what's going to turn out here? And guess what? He ends up with a 40% fine plus the little added uh, punishment, so $205,000 and the revocation of his license. So to me, that said, they already knew what they were going to give him going into the meeting or the hearing, and nothing he said in the hearing affected their stance. And I just don't see how that's possible. That makes me wonder openly whether or not USADA already knows what they're going to give him. And I wonder if his testimony, which was incriminating, which uh, he admitted he doesn't take the tutorials and he has his uh, manager's quote unquote, forge his signatures. I think he meant sign on his behalf, but those were the words that were used. Um, you know, you would think that that would hurt his cause, but I don't even know if that's the case. If they already had their punishment in mind and that's the punishment that he ended up with after that horrible testimony, then then what was the point of all of that? Why not just give him the punishment and end it? Like, why do we have to go through all of that? So in the end, I actually feel like this ended up being a good day for John Jones. It started off very bad, um, and in the end, some way, somehow, it ended up being good. And why did it end up being good? Not only because of that, because of this as well. Andy Foster, whom I have the greatest amount of respect for, you've heard me praise him um, on multiple occasions on this program. I believe that they actually were a little more lenient on him uh, than they could have been. Uh, he said that revoking John's license was the, the harshest penalty that they could give him because if they gave him a suspension, he could just come back after the one year or two years, whatever the case is, and keep on fighting. But to me, that is a flawed argument because his license um, is up for renewal in August. So basically, they revoked his license for the next, what, five months. So let's say USADA goes rogue and gives him a one-year suspension um, dating back to last year, so retroactive to last July's fight. That means come August, he's free to fight. Had you... California, the California State Athletic Commission, who is not in some kind of business relationship with the UFC, put your foot down once and for all and given John Jones a two-year suspension. He can't come back, come back in August. He can't come back until next year. So you are giving him a hard punishment. But now what you've done is we're revoking his license and we're saying to USADA, you punish the man. And once that punishment is over, then come back to us and then we'll talk about giving you a license once you serve that punishment, whatever it is. Now, is it possible that California knows what the punishment already is and they want to just, you know, pay that respect to USADA? Maybe. But what if they don't? And what if USADA says, you know what? You didn't know. We believe you. Uh, we'll give you a one year suspension. Well, then he's able to come back in five months. So I just don't know why they didn't take more of a hardline stance. And we've seen this from commissions in the past, as opposed to just uh, revoking his license and you know, now essentially he's able to reapply. And by the way, okay, fine. If Nevada, if California says, you know what, we don't believe, we don't think you've paid enough of a price. We don't want to give you back your license whenever his USADA suspension is done. Well, guess what? Every other commission under the sun is going to be able to do it. And they're not going to have to be beholden to California because there is no suspension on them anymore. If they gave him a two-year suspension, every commission under the sun would have um, uh, abided by it. But now they don't have to. So I just kind of felt like we'll see what the USADA suspension is. And it does. There, there's not going to be a public hearing like this, from what I understand. That's not the way it's trending right now. We'll just kind of find out what his punishment is, like we have found out more often than not with these USADA hearings. I just kind of felt like overall this was a very good day for John Jones, a day that could have gone way worse, that started way worse, and in the end he didn't get um, the, the 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 toughest punishment that maybe he should have gotten, given the testimony and how harmful 
um, it may have been, at least from our perspective. So two cents on it all. I think the immediate reaction was, this is horrible. He's screwed. He's going away for four years. I'm not buying that. I actually think it was a win for John Jones. I just want to see John Jones fight. I just want to see him back. It wasn't a good day for him as far as his testimony is concerned. No, it was. It was. It was. I didn't see it live. I had to go back and watch it, but I did follow along um, on social media, and boy, was that rough. It was. I mean, it was just one bad quote after the next, and you know this idea. Look, here we are in February from an incident that happened in July, and there's no alibi. There's no story. There, there's just. I swear to my heavenly Father, it was hard to watch. And look, I get, I appreciate the fact that he's not lying. I pre, I what I, what I mean to say Assuming, is I appreciate the fact that he didn't make up some crazy story about some yes. guy who gave him this, that, and the other. But there's nothing. There's no idea. There's no test. There's no supplement. There's no nothing as to what happened here. Doesn't that kind of play into the actual narrative, which is that John Jones is a bit aloof and doesn't really and nothing has changed. Yeah. And no, no don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm I'm on the same page as everybody else that this was. Um, not the way you approach this hearing, but it does kind of further back that idea that John Jones just doesn't have a good grasp on what's going on and is completely aloof of the, of the circumstances. And if you're trying to portray that as the counter to somebody willingly and knowingly taking steroids, it, it is copacetic. It does make, it does make some semblance of sense, but you'd like to see a little bit of effort at least go into how this happened, whether it's, going back and figuring it out it's something. not enough to just say something it happened and, yeah. and i don't know how it some happened chain of events some something uh and and none of it was there and uh look i don't i but don't need to see not, the guy cry i don't see, need to yeah, see any of that no. but it's not the opposite which is the sure somebody spiked my this right. i took this you know it, 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 we've had enough of that people are sick of that but at the same time you have to give yourself the best chance but as you said i mean all in all Ultimately, not a bad day for John Jones based on what the potential ramifications are. There was a lot of there was a lot of talk about how he presented it, but ultimately the punishment um, seems to not have been as harsh as it could have been. I, I I really thought it was a good day for him, a really good day for him. How true are the Chuck Liddell rumors uh, regarding him making an appearance for Bellator? Do you have any? Uh, I uh, okay. Thank you for for asking this. Um, People get upset sometimes when there are reports out there, and this one was first reported by Chris Taylor of BJPen.com. I want to give credit where it's due. When there's a report out there, my job is to go out there and try to verify the report, confirm the report, because that's my job. Literally, that's like a, an aspect of my job. Sometimes these stories aren't true. They're not accurate, and I have to put it out there. And it's not because I'm trying to throw shade on a reporter, young reporter, whatever the case is. It's just sometimes not true. And you know what? On, on this particular day, I was like, eh, I don't even want to deal with it. What I'm told from multiple Bellator officials at this moment, there's no deal in place. They have talked. It did not get very far. There's no deal in place. It is not imminent. It is not close. There's, there's, there's nothing on the table, essentially. And so people were going crazy. And I just I didn't want to deal with the all like white throwing shade. I mean, I just, I just didn't want to deal with it. So I appreciate you asking. And there you have it. That's where it stands yeah, it right now. And finally, after seeing an athlete, in this case Kobe Bryant, win an Oscar last night, is there anybody in MMA who could potentially win an Oscar? Who who has the makings of Oscar winner I now mean, that we've seen Kobe Bryant cross Have over? you seen that Burger King commercial? So what you're telling me, yes. hold on, time out. Yes, yes. So to, yes. to, to finish this, yes. what you're telling me yes. right now yes. is Conor McGregor yes. is going to win an Oscar not for producing something, yes. but actually for acting. That is what you took away from that Burger King commercial. You're picking Conor McGregor. Yes. To win an acting Oscar. Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, is there any other choice? I mean, it's the perfect way to end the day. It started with that. It ends with that. Here's the thing. By the way, here's the thing about the Kobe Bryant. And, and, and yeah. Was acting in there? Does it have to be specifically acting? No. Because Kobe didn't act in that, in that piece. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You've, you've picked a bold choice, my friend. Well, you don't think that a you don't think that a sincere dear MMA love letter animated short from Conor McGregor can win an Oscar? That's a different question. But you said based on the Burger King commercial in which Conor McGregor was acting. I just saw something there as far as theatrics <laughs> and delivery. I'll say cadence. this: it's obviously it's it's almost impossible to predict somebody to 
randomly win an Oscar years later, although I'm sure the Simpsons have have done it in in some capacity because they seem to predict everything that happens in the world. Um, I could see an MMA product like winning an Oscar of some sort, like some kind of documentary or some kind sure. of uh, fictional account um, that was well done. Um, because I really feel like to this point, MMA is a little bit untapped when it comes to those things. Like it, it hasn't really, um, it hasn't really seen the best of, of what I think filmmaking can be. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if down the line, some kind of MMA story um, was written that, you know, the, the, the writing uh, won an Oscar or the, the cinematography or something about um, the production aspect of it. I don't know if we have any actors um, who are, who are going to be taken home. Um, an Oscar, I'm not sure if you've seen Entourage, the film. Who was in that? Oh, uh, Rhonda. Yes. Or, uh, you know, WWE programming as of late. So I don't know if I would subscribe to that theory on your part. On that note. Goodbye. God bless. Salam alaikum. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. We are way out of time, so you can hit my music. Sorry to everyone in the back for... Uh, keeping you oh coming in hot with that music boom my poor ears um thank you very much to all who uh stuck with us in the back and of course uh watching the program what a day it has been my friends i mean you live for these days these are the kinds of days that you dream about and uh it's been fun everyone showed up everyone gave us good stuff we talked a lot about ufc 222 and the other things going on in the world of mixed martial arts and uh we heard from legends we heard from up-and-comers. We heard from champions. We heard from potential future champions. We heard from them all, former champions. What a great day it has been. I want to thank everyone who tuned in. As always, we appreciate it very much. Uh, hope you like our new breakdowns on, uh, on iTunes. Let us know what you think of that. And uh, thanks for sticking with us if you're still watching on Twitter. I appreciate all our guests who stopped by as well. Thank you very much to Sean O'Malley. Hope he gets well soon. Thank you very much to the great Brian Ortega and... Surprise guest, Henner Gracie. Congratulations to both of them on the big victory Saturday night. Thank you very much to Holly Holm. Good luck in her return. Thank you very much to John Fitch. Congrats on the new deal. Thank you very much to Kinky Gegard Musasi. And if he doesn't come out to that nickname, I will be very disappointed on May 25th. Thank you very much to George St. Pierre. How amazing. Great stuff. Great to catch up with him as always. Thank you very much to Luke Rockhold. Congrats on the new deal. Thank you very much to Darion Caldwell. Congrats to him on the win. Good luck to Nick Newell this Friday. That Sabina Mazo fight has been canceled, by the way. Thank you very much to Mackenzie Dern. Congrats to her. Thank you very much to Chris Cyborg. Congrats. And once again, thank you very much to the great Mike Goldberg. Back next week, same time and place. Until they say peace. Somebody here.